My name is Abad Toma. I'm an ENT uh, consultant at Kingston Hospital and St. George's Hospital uh, for the NHS. And I have private practice at um, Parkside Hospital in London and the new Victoria Hospital uh, in Kingston. And I, I divide my work between the, uh, the NHS and, and, and the private, um, performing both sort of clinics in, uh, in all hospitals and operating all the hospitals as well. Um, I always liked it even from, from university. It's uh, the, the beauty of it is that you, you specialize in a, in a particular area where you can have better control over it. Um, and with, from within ENT, it's such a, a wide range, and uh, I tend to sub-specialize into the, the nose or the rhinology side of it. Um, so when you start training, you have the, the options of having to do with a whole range of ENT. And as you, as you become more and more progressive into your training and into your work, uh, I developed a particular interest in noses and sinuses. Uh, and with that, I introduced basically working both within the nose to deal with sinus surgery, but also the outside of the nose when it comes to rhinoplasty. And that way, um, it gives you the option, if you like, of controlling uh, both the inside and, and the outside of the nose. So I find it very, very rewarding that way. Uh, what also helps is the fact in the NT, not everything you you do or not everybody you see needs an operation. So part of your work is dealing with patients medically um, and um, conservatively, while some patients require surgery. So you get to see both sides of the, of the treatment. Um, it also attracts both children who need simple things such as tonsils and then adults or, or middle-aged people or whatever who need um, sinus surgery um, and other sort of quality of life type of procedures. And then there's the elderly who might have more serious disease or um, hearing issues. So you get the whole range of, um, of age uh, in addition to practicing both your medicine and the surgery. My training was quite varied in that I did my university in Ireland, uh, in, in Dublin, and then um, I got my first position in the UK in, in London, uh, where I did some of my training. After that, I went to complete my registrar training in the southwest of England, rotating between Exeter, Plymouth, Bath, Bristol. Um, through the, you know, as part of that training, I also uh, went abroad quite a few times to learn sort of more detailed and more advanced surgery. So my training took me to, uh, to America to learn about the sinus surgery, um, took me to Canada to learn about the head and neck surgery. And then uh, finally, just before I completed my training, I was a fellow of the European Academy of Facial Plastic Surgery, um, where I went to both France and um, Zurich in, in, in Switzerland to practice both and to learn more about the uh, advanced sort of sinus surgery and the uh, rhinoplasty surgery. The challenge of specialization is part of the beauty of it in that it, it, it's not a dormant specialization. There's always something new happening. So for example, when I was st started training as a registrar level, um, the nose of the sinus surgery was pretty basic. While I was doing that, the telescopes become, uh, you know, became mainstream. So I trained to do endoscopic sinus surgery. And then with that, there are always new developments and new procedures coming out uh, over time. The endoscopic sinus surgery became much more advanced. And um, now we're doing all sorts of skull-based surgery and we're only limited by the length of the telescope. So there's always new equipment coming out. In other disciplines, which I, uh, my main work is with noses, but there's also uh, new developments in ear surgery and cochlear implants and uh, cancer surgery. Uh, and, that, and in addition to that, progress in the medical side of it as well. Um, as I mentioned before, in that the, uh, a lot of our uh, practice is practicing, is med providing medicines to patients and treating them conservatively. And even with that, there's been a lot of uh, progress. Now with uh, that kind of progress and the speed which is progressing, there are challenges in terms of whether it's funding or that's proving that it's worth doing. Um, and that's where we come into it to find out uh, and to try and prove what's the best way to, uh, to progress and provide the best treatment for our patients.